Uh, okay, it's it's my great pleasure to open uh, today's morning morning session and to introduce uh, uh, the first speaker, Krzysztof Fronczek. Krzysztof uh, is a professor at Nikolaus Copernicus University in Torun. Uh, he is an expert in uh, ergodic theory and dynamical systems. Uh, scientific interests of Krzysztof Fronczek focus mainly on uh, some classical problems uh, of the ergodic theory, uh, such as billiard systems uh, on rational polygons and uh, locally Hamiltonian flows on surfaces. Uh, his results are related to both mathematical physics and number theory, in the context of the pointwise prime number theorem for dynamical systems. In 2015, uh, Krzysztof uh, Fronczek was awarded the Banach Prize uh, of the Polish uh, uh, Mathematical Society for his uh, outstanding achievements uh, in mathematics. Uh, Banach Prize is the most prestigious prize in Poland. It's uh, very hard to to get it. I mean, the competition is uh, is really very hard. Okay, so now uh, Krzysztof, please start. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I, uh, thank you very much for this kind introduction and for inviting me and. I would like to tell a story about mathematical billiards. Mathematical plane billiard is a game on the uh, on an area which is uh, usually bounded but not necessary. Usually, uh, uh, the boundary of the table billiard table consists in finitely many um, smooth curves and. Um, the billiard ball in the mathematical billiard is a mass point which moves in straight lines uh, on the billiard table at uh, unit speed, as you see in this picture. And there are some uh, extremal uh, points in the time when uh, the billiard ball hits into the corner, which is, for example, the end of two uh, curves, then it dies. And otherwise, uh, it reflects from the boundary uh, according to the standard rule that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection according to the line tangent to the boundary at the impact point. So mathematical billiards are the subject of interest in mathematical physics, partial differential equations, and above all in uh, dynamical systems. And uh, I'm going to present some aspects of the theory of mathematical billiards from the point of view of dynamical systems. In particular, uh, I, uh, my emphasis will be on billiards on polygons because I'm uh, my research is, is, is uh, somewhat related in this topic. But first, I would like to start by introducing some uh, elements of the language of dynamical systems and ergodic uh, theory. And it will uh, take me probably the first hour of the talk. And let's start from uh, probability uh, space. Uh, here, X is um, the state, state space or phase space. And usually, uh, this is a um, compact metric or even compact uh, space. And then uh, B is the Borel sigma algebra. And finally, mu is a probability measure. And uh, this triple can be uh, treated uh, as a playground of dynamical system. And a discrete dynamical system then is an immeasurable transformation which acts from x to x. And most often, uh, 
T is also a measurable automorphism, which means that uh, it is a bijection and the inverse mapping is also measurable. Okay, when we have a discrete uh, time dynamical system, then a single element X uh, is interpreted as a state or position of uh, the dynamical system at uh, some point in time. Uh, whereas Tx is then a state or position of this element uh, after a discrete unit time. Of course, we can start from a state and position X. We can observe uh, an evolution in uh, one unit uh, in time, but we can uh, play uh, our game again and we can uh, look uh, at the position after the second unit, SARS, etc., 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 and the whole evolution of the object X. Then it's described by the following object, which is called uh, the orbit of uh, the element X. As you see, this orbit is. Are, uh, divided into two parts, one uh, which observe uh, positive, um, positive iterates and negative iterates. Uh, of course, when T is not e e invertible, then, then we can look only on the uh, forward uh, part. And this forward part describes you the future evolution of uh, our object and the backward part uh, is responsible for the description of the past. And we can observe also the evolution of sets of objects called usually events. So we can, we can observe uh, orbits of all of them also. Uh, and then, um, elements of this orbit have a natural interpretation. For example, uh, it's easy to observe that X belongs to this negative iteration if and only if um, the, the nth iteration of X belongs to A. So the interpretation of the set is that this is the set of points which after time n uh, will go to a. Uh, OK, so uh, what else? The measure of uh, the even EA uh, then is uh, interpreted, can be seen as the probability of this even. This is natural interpretation, uh, which you know. And then the measure of this pre-image, then uh, it can be seen as the probability of occurring of the even A, but after time N. And this way, we, uh, we can define, so we, 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 we can pass to the definition of the measure preserving of a dynamical system. And we say that such a dynamical system T is preserves uh, the measure mu if the uh, measure of the pre-image of every uh, measurable set is equal to the measure of the original set. So it's not so hard to deduce that we have also uh, such kind of equality, uh, which uh, roughly speaking means that um, the probability of occurring uh, an event does not depend on the position in time, something like that. And finally, we can consider quadruples of this form and such kind of quadruples are called usually measure preserving discrete time dynamical systems. Okay, what about examples? So let's move to, the, to some basic example. And the first one is a rotation on the 
circle. Then the phase space X uh, is uh, the unit complex circle of this form, which is equipped with sigma algebra of Borel sets and the normalized Lebesgue measure on this circle. Then for every number alpha between zero and one, we can consider the rotation T alpha, uh, which is the rotation on the circle by the angle two pi alpha. So in this situation, it's easy to understand uh, the forward or and backward orbit uh, of any point uh, because of the fact that if we start from uh, point Z, then we have to rotate and then rotate and rotate, rotate and rotate. And uh, finally, after n step of rotation, we obtain also a rotation by the angle two pi alpha and of course modulo two pi. And for our purposes, uh, we can identify uh, the circle with uh, the unit interval zero one uh, with ends uh, glued together or with the quotient group uh, R over Z. And this identification is simply given by the following exponential map. As you see um, here, zero is going to one, but one is going to e to power two pi i, which is also equal to one. So it means that this maps grew uh, one and zero together, and it gives a homeomorphism between S1 and, and, and uh, this interval with glute end. And on the other hand, we can consider the same map on uh, the full real line. And this map is uh, one periodic, uh, which means that it's constant on every equivalence class in this group. Okay. So you have a picture which describes uh, this uh, identification, which probably you very well know. Okay, uh, passing to this uh, additive uh, language, our rotation now is given by the translation by alpha on the interval on or on this group modulo one or modulo z whatever another example standard example of dynamical system is a bernoulli shift here the space x is the space of double infinite binary sequences uh, uh, B is the sigma algebra generated by so-called uh, cylindrical sets. And, uh, uh, and to describe uh, cylindrical sets, uh, let's consider for every sequence and for n a couple of integer numbers, uh, the following object, uh, X and M, this is exactly the word uh, which is seen in the sequence X in places, uh, in positions between and and M. And using this notion, we can define uh, cylinders uh, for every binary word of length K and N uh, integer number N, we can define the cylinder of this form um, which is the set of sequences in which reading from the position and we see the word A. And um, finally, uh, we can define the measure of any such cylinder set by one over two to power K where K is the length of the uh, word A and by Kolmogorov extension theorem, 
this measure can be extended from the set of uh, cylinder sets to the whole algebra, sigma algebra. And finally, uh, the transformation S uh, is defined as the left shift. Formally, this left shift is defined here, but uh, more geometrically, I should say that S moves the entire sequence one place to the left. So as you see, this dot uh, point you uh, more or less the zero, zero position and the sequence is moved a little bit to the left. And for any cylinder, the pre-image of this cylinder is also a cylinder of the same length. So in fact, the reading starting position now it's moved uh, to the right and because of this uh, property we see that um, the measure uh, so in fact s preserves the measure of cylindric sets and because of some uh, sigma and pi uh, lemma probably you know it uh, uh, we uh, obtain uh, full uh, preserve, preserving of uh, the measure uh, mu for all, for all measurable sets. Okay, now we can, I should mention that, uh, that in dynamical systems, the key rule is played by invariant sets, or in fact, by uh, absence of such invariant sets. And an invariant set, a uh, T invariant set, is a set such that the pre-image of uh, this set is equal to the uh, original set, but modulo measure. This modulo measure formally means that the measure of the symmetric difference is equal to zero. Uh, so it means that from the point of view of measure theory, these two sequence are equal. We, if you don't like measure theory, then we can construct a set an A prime, uh, which is the intersection of this form. And then this set, it's really invariant in the sense and it's, uh, equal in a measure to the original set A. Okay, what, what is the meaning of this invariant sets? If A is an invariant set, then for any point from, or almost every is better to say, uh, point uh, from this set, the full orbit of this uh, guy, it's included in the set A. And the same picture is true for the complement. The complement is also invariant. So it means that the whole space X splits into two subsystems. And if the measure of these two sets are positive, then the splitting is non-trivial. And now it's time to define ergo DCT. So we say that a dynamical system is ergodic if every its T invariant set is trivial, which means that its measure is equal to zero or one. Roughly speaking, it means that uh, ergodic dynamical system does not break down into subsystems or in different words, uh, uh, it's a kind of indecomposability. Okay, uh, how to check that uh, a dynamical system is ergodic. There is a nice characterization which says that T is ergodic if and only if any measurable invariant set is almost every constant. Invariance 
means that the composition of F with our dynamical system does not change uh, F too much. These two functions are equal mu almost everywhere. It means that they are equal on a set of measure one. And in, in a sense, uh, this characterization means that uh, all invariant uh functions mappings are only trivial constant and uh, in fact uh, this uh, right hand side can be also restricted to um, integrable or uh, square integrable or even bonded maps and um Roughly speaking, this characterization is based on a simple observation uh, that for, uh, for character, if F is characteristic, uh, the characteristic map of an, in, it's better to say in different words. Let's consider F, which is uh, the characteristic map of a set. Then F is invariant if and only if the set A is invariant as well. And this uh, equivalence uh, simply follows from this observation that characteristic function, uh, the composition of characteristic function is also the characteristic function of the pre-image of the set A. Okay, what about ergodicity of our examples? Let's start from the rotation. The rotation T alpha is ergodic if and only if alpha is irrational. So let's start from rational situation uh, when alpha is of this form P over Q. Then uh, it's easy to observe that and the one over Q periodic set, it's invariant for the rotation. And using this observation, it's not too difficult to find a non-trivial invariant set, which is the union of a small interval and a union of this guy with consecutive one uh, over Q translates of this interval. You see this red guy in this picture. If alpha is irrational, then uh, we can easily prove that any square integrable uh, invariant map is almost every constant. And let's look at the simple proof. Each such map can be treated as a periodic uh, map on uh, the real line with period one. And then we can use uh, the Fourier series of such guy. The Fourier series is described fully here. And it's easy to understand the Fourier series of the, of the composition with the rotation. So uh, direct computations shows you that, uh, that uh, the Fourier coefficients of this, uh, this guy is given by, they are given by this form. And since these two maps are equal, almost every. So it means that they are equal in the space L2. Uh, all the coefficients are, must be equal. But on the other hand, because of irrationality, this guy usually is not equal to one. It's equal to one only for n, equ n equal to zero. So it means that Fourier coefficients generally are vanishing except of the trivial situation. And it follows that F is just constant because it's equal to the trivial part of the Fourier series. 
Okay, what about the Bernoulli shift? Bernoulli shift is also ergodic, but uh, the proof of ergodicity here have a different flavor and I would like to skip it. Sorry, may I have a question? Yeah, sure. Uh, so from this uh, ergodicity, it follows that uh, uh, each function uh, which is uh, measurable and invariant under the action is uh, almost uh, everywhere constant. So in particular, does this proof implies that the each orbit is dense in this case? Where the, uh, uh, is no, uh, generally it's not true, but in this situation, yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, why is it generally not true? Uh, so uh, uh, if you consider uh, if you consider measure theoretical uh, framework, then this is not true. If you if you would prove that uh, all continuous, for example, if you know that T is a homeomorphism, and if you know that uh, all continuous invariant uh, sets, uh, so, sorry, maps are uh, uh, fully uh, constant, then it implies minimality. But, but, uh, but, but if you deal with, uh, with measurable functions that, that there is no chance to, 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 to prove minimality and a good, a good, um, a good uh, a counter example is Bernoulli shift. Okay, so where there are fixed points. Okay, so uh, in general, one cannot argue like this, but uh, in this case, uh, where the uh, uh, group Z acts on circle, it is. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Here, yes. Here, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But I thought that you, 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 you thought about about general context. Okay, but thank you. But um, uh, I'm asking this question because usually people say something like this, that um, if the, this alpha is irrational, then it is easy to prove that each orbit is dense. But actually the direct proof of this fact is very tedious. It's, it's, not, so, it's not so easy. One has to struggle a little bit. Okay, I, I, in, a, in a sense, I will prove in a moment. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, let's pass to er, uh, Bikov ergodic uh, theorem, which says that for every ergodic dynamical systems system and uh, for for every integrable map f and for almost every starting point, um, uh, the the averages of the function f along the forward semi-orbit converges to the mean value of f. And for better understanding, it's uh, nice to consider the case where f is, uh, the, is a characteristic function. Then the ergodic average is equal to the uh, frequency of the beginning of the orbit at the set A. Uh, and because of uh, the Bilkov's ergodic theorem, it, uh, it tends to the measure of A. And this interpretation of ergodicity, it's nice from, uh, from my point of view, because it means uh, that uh, almost every orbit is equidistributed um, throughout the whole space. So it means that if we start from X and we observe the trace of uh, orbit, uh, uh, it means that uh, our orbit will appear in n set infinitely many times, first of all, and uh, the second information and the density of occupation, it's, um, it's, 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 it's um, proportional to the space which we deal with, more or less. And 
this is related to the um, uh, to the notion of equidistribution of orbits uh, throughout uh, the space. And for example, if T is additionally a homeomorphism on a compact metric space, mu is an invariant measure. And uh, if we know that uh, Bilkov's ergodic uh, theorem holds for every continuous map and for every starting point, then we call such a dynamical system uniquely ergodic. And for such uniquely ergodic uh, systems, uh, we know that every semi-orbit is equidistributed in the phase space, not only almost every uh, orbit uh, uh, as in uh, the um, as in uh, Birkhoff's uh, ergodic uh, theorem, and uh, so as uh, an answer to the previous question, I can say that if you know that the measure mu has full support and uh, a homeomorphism is uniquely ergodic, then, uh, then, then, then the minimality is for free. And now I will try to prove unique ergodicity for irrational rotations. And to do it, uh, let's look, let's start from uh, testing uh, this convergence, our required convergence, on uh, exponential maps of this form. It's easy to calculate that the mean value of such exponential map is either zero or one. And for example, in the case when m is equal to zero, then everything, then f is constant and equal to one, and there is no problem with convergence. Uh, the only uh, interesting case is when m is non-zero, then uh, we can calculate the ergodic average and uh, we can represent it as the following guy, where the most important part is this sum, which is uh, the sum of a, a geometric uh, sequence, all we know. Uh, from the school, uh, what is the formula for this guy? So we can identify this average this way and we can estimate the absolute value of this guy. Of course, the absolute value of this guy is equal to one. The absolute value of this guy is bounded uh, by estimated by two. This guy, because of irrationality, is non zero. And we obtain the following estimates and passing to, to, to the infinity, we obtain uh, the required uh, convergence. And this convergence can be easily extended to uh, complex, finite complex combinations of uh, exponential maps, which are called trigonometric polynomials. And since trigonometric polynomials are dense in the space of, of uh, continuous maps, we can extend this convergence starting from every uh, point X to the space of uh, whole uh, um, continuous maps. Okay, what about Birkhoff shift? Birkhoff shift is not uh, uniquely ergodic. And to see it, uh, it's enough to take uh, the characteristic uh, function of uh, a cylinder fixing zero at uh, the position zero and the zero sequence. Of course, when we shift, um, a zero sequence, we always see zero at zero position. So the, the, the value of function f is always equal to one. So it's easy to calculate 
the average. And on the other hand, we obtain the mean value, which is equal to the measure of the cylinder, which is equal one half. They are not equal, but this is not a surprise because of the fact that, that homeomorphism is uniquely ergodic if and only if uh, T has only one probability invariant measure, but uh, Bernoulli shift has a lot of um, invariant measures and we considered here a particular invariant measure which is uh, the Dirac uh, point measure at the fixed point, zero fixed point. Um, so roughly speaking, unique ergodicity distinguishes between uh, mild chaotic systems such as rotations and strongly chaotic systems uh, as, uh, such as Bernoulli shifts. Of course, uh, there are a lot of concepts in dynamical systems that serve uh, to great house, but I will focus here only on unique ergodicity. And uh, uh, to be formal, I should say you, uh, when two dynamical systems are isomorphic, such two systems, I isomorphic exactly when there exists a measurable bijection V, which transports the measure mu on X to the measure mu on Y, and which intertwines the action of T and S. And this, in this situation, T and S satisfies the same dynamical properties. If additionally, T, S and V are uh, homeomorphisms, then we say about topological isomorphism, which is a little bit stronger. And for example, unique ergodicity survives uh, under, the, under this topological isomorphism. Okay, until now, I told you about discrete time dynamical systems, but unfortunately or fortunately, from the point of view of dynamical systems, billiards are most often uh, dynamical systems with continuous time and now uh, I would like to take a moment to discuss such systems with continuous time. But uh, let's start from a simple observation that a discrete dynamical system, discrete time dynamical system, it's not only a single um, map, this is in fact uh, a family of uh, maps uh, parameterized by, 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 um, uh, by integers. And the null map is equal to the identity and uh, the composition of these maps is coherent with, uh, the, uh, uh, with, with the addition of, of, of parameters. And the same con concept we can use for the actions of other groups. Here, I will deal only with two of them, both our abelian Z and R, and uh, by a continuous time dynamical system, uh, we will mean always uh, the family, continuous family of maps on X, which are measurable automorphisms and uh, which satisfy the following two property. The null map is equal to the identity and the composition is coherent with the adding the parameter. 
and as similar as for uh, discrete time version uh, and the uh, uh, small x in the phase space in, is interpreted as a state or position of our dynamical system at time zero, whereas TTX is interpreted as a state or position after uh, time T. And from this point of view, this assumption is quite natural. It says that if we start from uh, object X, and we trace uh, it uh, until time t, then we stop and uh, we start to, to, to trace him uh, uh, to the time s. So the final, the final object will be equal to the object when we travel by time t plus s, something like that. Maybe, maybe I'm not clear here, but whatever. Okay. So in this, in this situation for continuous time uh, dynamical systems, we can describe uh, also the notion of orbit, which trace uh, for you the, the, the forward and backward time uh, travel of, of X. And uh, I should mention that uh, uh, continuous time dynamical systems are called often uh, flows, and I will use this, this, this name, and a flow uh, preserves, uh, it's measure preserving if uh, uh, every time t uh, map preserves the measure, and then we can consider the following uh, quadruple, which is called a measure preserving continuous time dynamical system. And I will not focus on it, but uh, all concepts um, which uh, were defined uh, until now, we can easily uh, translate to continuous dynamical systems. Instead of using sums, we have to use integrals. And let's go to some examples. And the simplest example of a flow, of a measure preserving flow, is uh, a rotation on the torus. By the torus, I uh, will mean the quotient group R2 over Z2. So this is the full plane when we identify points uh, for which um, the difference between uh, coordinates are are, are integer. On the other hand, um, uh, our torus can be seen as uh, as uh, the unit unit uh, square, which pairs of uh, vertical and horizontal sides, which can be glued parallel. And after this parallel gluing. In fact, we obtain the object which uh, you know as a torus, topological torus. Okay, and what is a, a, a rotation? Rotation is a flow uh, given by n vector alpha, beta, and it's defined by the rotation. Uh, on the torus uh, along the direction of the vector. Because of the fact that translations uh, preserves uh, the measure, it's a measure preserving flow. Okay, what about the ergodicity of such guys? To understand uh, ergodicity, we have to consider, uh, first of all, let's suppose that uh, the, the, the coordinate of the rotation beta is, is positive, and let's consider uh, the circle, the circle 
uh, i in our in our torus of this form, which is exactly uh, the uh, horizontal uh, side of, of our square. And for every member of this uh, circle, we look at the uh, first return time to this, uh, to this set. So we would like to find the first t for which we come back to i. Okay, if we start from and set here, we flow up, 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 and the first return time to the, the interval or circle i uh, is exactly when t times beta is equal to one. So the first return time then is equal to one over beta and we can consider the first return time map uh, which shows you the first return uh, uh, time object. So it's equal to this guy. And because we live on the torus, we can, we can, we can, we can identify this one with zero. What does it mean? It means that in fact, this first return time map, it's isomorphic to the rotation on the circle. And this rotation is given by the ratio alpha over beta. And this is not hard to prove that, um, that uh, our flow is ergodic or uniquely ergodic if and only if this guy, this, this, this rotation on the circle, it's also ergodic or uniquely ergodic, but we already know that the ergodicity or uh, unique ergodicity depends on the irrationality of this ratio. I think that my time is already over, so I should skip maybe this example and pass to the last example, uh, which comes from uh, uh, ordinary differential equations. So let's consider an autonomous ordinary differential equation on an area in Rd, which is given by a smooth vector field. And then we can consider um, the following ordinary differential equation. And let's suppose that for every starting point from this area, there is a solution, full solution of the Cauchy problem. And then we can define the corresponding flow in the following way that tt on x0 is the t time solution of this problem. And it's a flow. It's a flow because of the fact that we consider only autonomous and differential equations and um, standard Leuville theorem says you that this flow preserves the Lebesgue measure if and only if the divergent, uh, the divergence of, 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 of the uh, field is vanishing. Okay, thank you for your attention uh, during the first hour. Questions? There yeah. any questions? Comments? Okay, not in the lecture room, maybe someone online. Then questions? Okay, so we shall make a break until uh, five past ten, okay, 15 minutes, till five past ten, and uh, well, Okay, so after thank you, for, for the first, thank you very much for the first uh, part, great introduction, and then we will proceed with the second part in 15 minutes. Okay, so see you. Okay, recording progress, please, uh, Krzysztof, start your second part, please. Thank you very much. Welcome back, everyone. And now, after too long introduction, we can come back to the main object of the interest of us for today, which are billiards. And we will consider 
billiards on areas uh, on the plane, which are bonded by a finite chains of uh, C2 curves, and such that each curve is either convex or concave. And this is exactly the situation which you see on the picture. And then for every unit vector V uh, with uh, the foot point and the interior of omega, we can define its billiard orbit BTT in this way. So it means that for um, that the vector XV uh, is uh, moved um, in the direction of, of V at the unit speed until the heating of the boundary. And if we hit a corner, like in this situation, uh, our trajectory, our orbit dies. And otherwise, if, in, if we are in the middle of, of, of the uh, boundary of, of, of a curve, uh, then mm, uh, the orbit uh, is reflected crossing the line tangent to the boundary at the impact point. So it means that, ah, I should mention also that instead of multiplicative um, uh, notation, I uh, will use also uh, the additive uh, notation when instead of uh, vector V, I'll we use uh, the complex notation E to power two Ti theta. Okay, and uh, it means that, oh, sorry, but my, my computer was frozen for a moment. It follows that the phase space of our billiard flow uh, X uh, is the space of uh, vectors of this form when uh, the foot point is in omega and uh, V is a, a unit uh, vector. And um, with the additional uh, abstraction, then if the foot point is in the boundary, but not in the corner, that we consider only inward vectors. And this is more or less the definition of the billiard flow on an uh, uh, table omega. And it, it is not so hard, but it is not completely easy also to show that the billiard flow preserves the product measure of the Lebesgue measure on omega and uh, the Lebesgue measure uh, on the space of directions. And now probably the best way is to move to specific examples of billiards. And let's start uh, from uh, billiard flow flows uh, on ellipses. Suppose that omega is an ellipse. And then we have a very nice property that every in this case, uh, for every orbit, there exists a confocal ellipse or hyperbola, such that uh, every line segment of the orbit is tangent to this uh, conic curve. And this is exactly the situation which we see on the picture. Then this ellipse is tangent to any part of the trajectory, and such kind of curves are called uh, caustics. So uh, in other words, uh, confocal hyperbolas and for confocal ellipses are caustics of uh, the billiard uh, flow on an uh, ellipse. And let's consider, let's denote uh, by lambda c, the family of all confocal ellipses inside omega. And uh, let's consider a pair of sets of this form 
x plus minus c plus is one version minus is the second version of the subset of all the vectors whose orbits are tangent to the fixed um, ellipse lambda c and uh, which runs uh, which run clockwise in the positive situation and uh, uh, counterclockwise in negative situation. So it's easy to observe that for any point x in the ring between ellipses, there are in fact four um, vectors which give orbits which are tangent to the ellipse lambda c. The two of them uh, look uh, run uh, clockwise, and there are two of them uh, which run uh, counterclockwise, and we deal only with uh, these two in the positive situation, and in the negative situation, we uh, take only this negative two. And okay, this set because of the fact that lambda c is a uh, caustic, we know that each this set c plus minus c is invariant under the action of the billiard flow. So it means that the phase space of our flow uh, splits into many invariant sets. So it implies non-ergodicity in a very particular way. But nevertheless, even if we know that uh, there is no ergodicity, there are a lot of invariant sets, uh, we are interested in dynamics of the billiard flow, but restricted to such, um, to such invariant sets. And let's look at the uh, dynamics of the billiard flow and the set uh, on the set XC plus. And uh, as, uh, as, 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 as we, we uh, have observed already, there are two vectors uh, with, uh, foot point, is with the foot point at any point uh, in, this, in, this, in this ring between, between ellipses. And it follows that in fact this set can be identified uh, with the union of two copies of such rings. So in this copy, we collect all vectors which looks which uh, looks uh, which looks sorry outwards, and we collect here all vectors which uh, looks look uh, inwards uh, the ellipse. Okay, so formally, as I said, uh, then this set is the union of two copies of rings. And here you have a picture uh, of uh, the of the orbit, but of course the our billiard orbit must change the copy. After, after, after reflecting, or after, uh, after, after, after uh, passing through uh, the tangent point. And now we can we can glue these two copies along ellipses, along black ellipse and green ellipse, and from the topological point of view the resulting object is a topological torus and the, the the action of our 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 uh, orbit now it's quite nice because the gluing rules are coherent with the action of 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 orbits and the last fact which I would like to quote because it's not so easy, it's not completely easy to prove that um, on this torus, uh, uh, in fact, the, the restriction of the billiard flow is isomorphic to the to a rotation on this torus. This rotation is given by a vector, 
which of course depends on the parameter C. The parameter C uh, was responsible for the parameter of the conic, uh, sorry, for the caustic. Okay, so it means that we are able to understand the dynamics of the restricted billiard flow restricted to n set x c plus minus. This dynamics is isomorphic to the rotation on the torus. And if we know this fact that all dynamical properties then depends on the value of this ratio. Uh, I should mention that the tr this ratio can be computed explicitly. This is a ratio of some elliptic integrals, which are non-trivial. And uh, because of our knowledge from the first, uh, first hour a lecture, we know that if this ratio is irrational, then every billiard orbit, which is tangent to lambda c, is equidistributed on the ring between ellipse. Otherwise, in the rational situation, every orbit is periodic. So it gives a full description of, 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 the, of the billiard behavior uh, on ellipses. It's a quite easy description. And I should mention that the behavior of billiard flows on strict, on general strictly convex smooth tables uh, are much more complicated. Um, so only for ellipse we see such clear, such clear description. And I should say that there are uh, some results about existence of uh, caustics, but generally uh, people uh, can prove only the existence of of a single caustic. Of course, this implies absence of uh, unique ergodicity, but not, not much more. Much more is known for another class of, of, of billiards, but uh, this, uh, the dynamics is completely different. And uh, the type of uh, billiards, which I would like to say, but only shortly, uh, are uh, so-called uh, con concave um, tables. Uh, <coughs> concave table, it's a, it's a table for which at least one curve is concave. This is exactly the situation which we see here, there are exactly three parts of the boundary which are concave. And this is a very important uh, class of billiards. They appear uh, in uh, so-called physical billiards. Uh, so for in physical billiards, the billiard ball, it's not a mass point, it's a solid ball and uh, the dynamics of such physical uh, billiards uh, are generally much more complicated and they are uh, they can be reduced more or less to mathematical billiards on some polygons and some parts of of, of the boundary uh, are uh, concave and I, 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 unfortunately, I have no time to, to, to say uh, anything more about uh, concave billiards, but I should mention that a standard uh, theorem about this class of billiards says that uh, billiard flow on concave uh, table is ergodic and uh, even uh, sometimes it's uh, isomorphic in a sense to billiard shift. So it means that uh, concave tables are very chaotic in contrast to, for example, of elliptic, which can be even uh, uniquely ergodic on, uh, on, on, on uh, invariant sets. Okay, so now I would like to pass to my favorite class, which are billiards or polygons. And in this class, 
the theory of dynamical systems, it's not well developed here. Uh, an old theorem by Kirchhoff, Mazur, and Smiley uh, seems to be still the best one. And uh, this theorem says that for every number n, which is greater or equal than three, for a typical n-gon p, the Billard flow on this n-gon is ergodic. Typicality here uh, has topological flavor. Uh, typical means that uh, we consider a G delta dense set of n-gons. G delta set, uh, as you probably know, it's a, a countable intersection of dense and open sets. And in the top, from the topological uh, point of view, uh, this kind of sets are treated as large sets. This is a counterpart of almost every in, 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 in measure theory. Okay, but this is a very nice theorem, but uh, nevertheless, this theorem is not effective and it is very difficult to point concrete examples of ergodic polygons. And even in the class of right triangles, there is no characterization of um, triangles which are ergodic. In fact, this is not an open, this is not the only open problem in uh, billiards on polygons. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, there are uh, a lot of open problems that seem to be easy, but there are not easy. For example, the existence of periodic billiard orbits in polygons, it's still open. Even for triangles, it's still, uh, there is no answer for, for in, in general case. And, um, okay. Rim, may I have a question? Yes, sure. So uh, you consider the uh, collection of all possible n-gons, yes? So this is yeah. defined as uh, all, what, n, n tuples of point on the plane? Uh, yeah. Uh, with some conditions that, for example, yeah, all yeah, three yeah, of yeah, them yeah. lies on the same line and, and so on. Uh, and this is uh, treated as a subspace of an Euclidean space, yes? And the topology yes, is yes, exactly. And a... the topology is carried out from the Euclidean space. Yes, okay. yes, exactly. Okay, I see. Thank you. Okay, coming back to triangles and the question about the existence of periodic orbits. So uh, this question have an obvious answer, a positive answer for acute triangles because of the uh, fact that uh, in this situation, um, the triangle, uh, the triangle which um, whose vertices are the base points of three attitudes of the acute triangle, uh, forms uh, an ergodic orbit. This is this is always true for an, an acute triangle. Uh, for example, for right triangle, uh, finding uh, uh, periodic orbits, it's even ever it's even easier. And an example of such guy, it's exactly drawn here. But in the case of ab ab obtuse. Uh, triangles in general, a little it's no. If um, uh, obtuse angle it's too large, that there is no theorem about the existence of a periodic orbit. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I would like to focus on my favorite, a class of um, uh, polygonal uh, orbits. They are billards or rational polygons. And a polygon, it's called rational if all angles are rational multiples of pi. And the simplest example of such a billiard is uh, the billiard of an rectangle. And if we start to play a billiard in the direction theta, then 
we can only get four possible directions of the motion after reflections. And these directions are theta, pi minus theta, pi plus theta, and minus pi. And you see here on this picture why, uh, in, in which uh, way uh, these directions uh, can appear. I should mention that, in fact, this set is uh, the orbit of the action of the group gamma, where gamma is the group of isometries which are generated by vertical reflection and the horizontal reflection. Of course, uh, there are not so there are not so many uh, members of this group. There are four only: identity, one reflection, the second reflection, and the composition of them, but uh, they create uh, all, all uh, possible directions of the motion uh, in the rectum. What does it mean? It means that for every direction theta, this set in the face space of, uh, of, of the billiard, uh, this set is invariant under the action of the billiard flow. So, as for, uh, oh, as for uh, ellipse, we have a splitting of our phase space into many invariant sets. So for example, we don't have ergodicity, but still we are interested in the behavior of the restriction of the billiard flow to the set P theta. And let's look at this. Uh, at this uh, type of uh, dynamics. So formally, P theta is the union of four copies of our rectangle. And in each copy, we collect vectors uh, which uh, run in the direction theta, pi minus theta, minus theta, and pi plus theta. And you see, for example, this fragment, this segment of, of, of orbit, in fact, now uh, lies into four copies of our billiard table. Okay. And now we can unify, in a sense, the direction of the motion, how to do it. It's enough to reflect this three. Uh, rectangles. If we reflect this rectangle by the uh, horizontal reflection, we obtain this guy. If we reflect this guy by vertical uh, reflection, we obtain this guy. And if we uh, transform this guy by the composition of two reflections, we obtain, we obtain the following picture. So as you see, we obtain four copies, but the direction of the motion is, is, is the same. And now we can glue them together along the corresponding sides. And after this gluing, we obtain a very nice picture on which we flow in the same direction. And the object, the resulting object is the torus, which we have already seen. And the restricted billiard flow now is isomorphic to the rotation flow on the torus. We can rescale uh, the size of, of the torus uh, to, be, to be the standard torus. And then the direction of the motion is given by the following vector. So as we know, uh, all uh, dynamical properties of the of such kind of rotations depends on the value of the ratio of the two guys. So, uh, and depends on the value of this number. If it is rational, then we know that all orbits are periodic. It is not, not rational, irrational, then we know that all uh, orbits are equidistributed in the, in this torus. So this is equivalent to say that our, our orbits are equidistributed uh, in uh, the table, on the table. 
what to say. Okay. And uh, this procedure, which I described to you, it's an example of applying so-called unfolding procedure, which works for any rational polygon. For any rational polygon P, let's consider the group gamma, uh, which is the group of isometries fixing zero generated uh, by uh, reflection, uh, reflections across lines parallel to all sides of uh, our polygon. And since, because of uh, rationality of the polygon, and uh, all angles uh, between sides uh, belongs to, 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 to belong to, to this set, so are multiples, multiples of a number pi over n, this group of uh, isometries generated by, by, by finitely many um, uh, reflections, uh, this group is it's, it's finite. So it means that after reflection, if we start from the direction of the motion theta, after uh, any reflection from any, from any side, we are still in this set. This is the same situation and as, as for, for, for the torus. So this is exactly the orbit of the group gamma generated by the direction of the motion theta. So it means that this set is a subset of uh, phase space uh, of the billiard uh, flow. It's also invariant, so we also have a lot of invariant sets. And moreover, every such invariant set can be uh, identified with uh, the union of uh, gamma copies of our polygon. OK, this is the picture which says you that all these copies given by 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 the by the inverse of uh, isometries um, uh, generated by, by uh, from 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 the group gamma can be glued together along some sides. In fact, uh, in this picture, gamma it's exactly the reflection across the line in the direction of this common side. And as you see. Uh, the a segment of, of, of orbit uh, which reflected in the original uh, picture of the table on this set, now it's a straight line orbit, which is good for us because we like straight lines in general. Okay, I should mention that after gluing these guys, in proper way, the resulting objects is a compact surface, which we, which would be denoted by MP, and the billiard flow restricted to the set P theta is in fact isomorphic to the translation flow in the direction theta on the surface, and to be to be a little bit more understandable what's going on, let's look at this uh, unfolding procedure uh, in a particular, in a specific example of billiard flow on a, a right angle uh, triangle with an uh, acute um, angle equal to pi over eight. In this situation, we have to reflect this triangle as many times as we can. This is, uh, we can do it uh, 16 times and we can, we should glue uh, all copies or reflected copies along 
the sites uh, of, of, of uh, reflection. And after, after uh, first step of gluing, we obtain, we obtain a regular octagon. A regular octagon for which we should identify the opposite sides of, 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 of death. So uh, these uh, opposite sides are uh, labeled by A, B, C, and D. And here you see a segment of orbit in the original, in, uh, on the original table. And on the other hand, you see here the same segment of orbit, but on the unfolding object. And we have a miraculous uh, thing. Everything now it's flowing in the same direction along straight lines. Okay, uh, we will have another um, miracle uh, in in a, in a moment. What we can do now? Now we can we can glue together, for example, the sides opposite sides labeled by D, and after uh, this procedure, uh, we obtain a topological pipe, which with three intervals here, which should be glued also. And in the next step, we can glue uh, the couple of sides C, and after this glue, we, of course, we have to bend our pipe. And after this gluing, uh, the resulting object is a topological torus with one hole. And now we can glue the sides which are labeled by B. And after this gluing, we obtain also a topological torus, but now with two holes. And these two holes can be glued together. And the final resulting object is a surface of genius two. And this is a nice object, it's a surface, but there are on this sur surface, there are very special points. And for example, we should observe that all vertical vertices of the octagon, in fact, in this procedure of gluing, are glued uh, uh, in the surface to a single point. And it means that the total angle around this point is the sum of angles around vertices. And it's not so hard to compute that this is equal to six pi. So generally, this surface locally looks like Euclidean space because generally it follows from this picture. But there are some exceptional points, not so many because here there is only one exceptional point. And uh, they are called singular points. Otherwise, if uh, the, uh, ang uh, the total angle around a point is equal to pi, that we say about regular points and most points are regular. And now um, we, uh, are, uh, we are prepared to uh, the definition of translation surface. Uh, an example of such translation surface we had uh, two minutes ago, one of them is uh, uh, surface of genius one. And the first one, in fact, is the two, 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 two torus uh, from coming from the rectangle vineyard. Okay, a translation surface, it's a topological compact connected surface uh, with a finite subset of distinguished points, uh, which are called singular points. And uh, additionally, we have an atlas of chairs, uh, which covers uh, the set of regular points. And uh, this atlas is such that- uh, Krzysztof, excuse me, I, yeah? I have a question. 
So you obtain this uh, um, torus of torus surface of genus two, and the original floor is is it similar as in the case of uh, of uh, yes of yes, the re I, rectangle I, that you have just one direction and somehow e exactly exactly and the, the definition the definition uh, of this uh, flow is just in the next line. Ah, okay. okay, I just want. <laughs> Okay, but uh, coming back to translations to translation surfaces, the transition maps for uh, for 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 charts are given by translations. So it means that the displacement between local coordinates uh, are very simple. They are given by uh, simple translations. And now, because of this definition, for every direction theta. And for every regular point, uh, we can define uh, the translation flow uh, on our surface in direction theta. And this is given by this formula in local coordinates. So this is exactly what, uh, what did you ask. We just flow in the direction theta uh, with uh, unit uh, with unit um, speed. Of course, this is not as easy as for uh, the torus because there are singular points, and we can define we can define uh, our flow for most points from the surface, but not for all. So there are orbits which hit which hit uh, singular points and then the orbit dies. This is, this is, this is exactly the situation. Okay, what does it mean? Finally, it means, this is also an answer to, to your question that if we deal with a rational polygon, then the billiard uh, flow restricted to the set P theta is isomorphic to the translation flow on the surface MP. And the uh, end of the story, for, unfortunately, because I have no time to, to, to continue, and probably it, it will be a, a good point to stop, is that Kelkov, Mazur, and Smiley in the well, earlier you have mentioned... time until 10.50, if you wish. Ah, 50. Okay, okay, yeah, sure. Because, Thanks. Uh... I, I forgot that I, 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 I started five minutes uh, late. Okay. So uh, uh, Kelkov, Mazur, and Smiley in the earlier mentioned uh, paper proved uh, that for every translation surface and for almost every direction of the motion, the translation flow, it's uniquely ergodic. On the other hand, it's quite easy to understand that there is a dense set of directions for which uh, translation flow uh, has periodic points. So it's a counter part, uh, sorry, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a uh, complementary part of, 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 of this set in a sense. Not fully. Okay, so the final corollary says that if we know that every uh, restricted flow, billiard flow to PT is um, isomorphic to the translation flow on the surface, and for almost every direction of the motion, this flow is uniquely ergodic, then the same holds for restricted billiard flows. And the final corollary says that for every uh, rational polygon, for almost every direction of the motion, all billiard flows are equidistributed on the, on the polygon. And on the other side, uh, there is a dense set of directions uh, for the billiard flow, which allows periodic orbits. So uh, it, uh, it, it gives also an answer to the problem of existence of periodic orbits, but only in a very restricted class of rational 
polygons. Uh, I still have five minutes, but I'm not sure <laughs> is it enough to continue uh, the, 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 the subject. Uh, maybe I, I, I will try. Okay. Okay, this is a, a very exciting uh, CRM and maybe I will able to say something about uh, methods of proving. And these methods of uh, proving are based on the notion of the moduli space of translation surfaces. And uh, the, it, it, it gives a link to algebraic geometry. To define uh, the model space of translation surfaces, uh, I need three remarks. The first said that every translation surface can be represented as a polygon for which sides are partitioned into pairs of parallel sides of the same length, which are glued. And this is exactly an example of such polygon with pairs of parallel sides of the same uh, length. And the second remark says that this polygonal representation, it's not unique. So you can cut off a, a triangle and glue it uh, to the other side. So after this cut and paste procedure, we obtain another good polygon um, uh, producing the same surface, but formally the polygon is different. And the third remark says that for any pair of such polygonal representations, one representation can be obtained from the other after a finite chain of cut and paste operations. And uh, now the moduli space of translation surfaces of ARIA with ARIA1 and Genius G is uh, the quotient space of the set of polygons of area one leading to the genius G surface uh, when we identify um, uh, polygons which are described in the uh, remark three. And I should mention that uh, this moduli space has a natural manifold structure and uh, this manifold local coordinates are given by uh, coordinates of the vertices of, 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 of polygons. Uh, moreover, this uh, moduli space uh, usual, is, is always non-compact and usually not connected expect, uh, except of the case G equal to one. And the moduli space in, for G equal to one, so it means that we consider the moduli space of translation tori, it's identified with this uh, homogeneous space. So this homogeneous space, it's three-dimensional, but uh, we can imagine it as a sac uh, which is very long and which has one hole at the infinity and this one hole at the infinities, infin infinitesimal hole, it's called a cusp. And generally, a general uh, moduli space have a lot of cusps. And um, on this moduli space, uh, there are two important flows, which are defined uh, by linear transformations of polygons. If you have a good polygon and you transform this polygon by any linear, by any linear uh, transformation, uh, you still have pairs of uh, par parallel polygons of the uh, sides, oh, sorry, of the same length, which can, we, which can be glued. And this way we obtain a new surface. So it means that this is a new point on the moduli space. And these two important uh, actions uh, are called the Teichmiller flow and the rotation flow. And the Teichmiller flow is uh, determined by uh, diagonal uh, 
subgroup of, of matrices and the rotation the rotation group it's the rotation action it's it's defined by rotations and finally i should mention that there is a beautiful result by maser which intertwines uh, the dynamics uh, the, the technical dynamics with the uh, dynamics uh, on the translation dynamics on the translation surfaces and it says that for every translation surface, translation surface, it's a point in the moduli space. And if we know that uh, the forward Teichmiller orbit is recurrent for this action, then the vertical uh, translation flow on the surface, it's uniquely ergodic. And I should mention that recurrence means that uh, there is a compact subset in the moduli space, which is not compact, uh, such that uh, the trajectory, Teichmiller trajectory, comes back to the set infinitely many times along a sequence which is divergent. And this result, it's a base of the, of the, of the more or less, is the base of the previous result, uh, which was uh, which was the base of the main result, which I uh, wanted to sell you today. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker. Okay, any, any questions or comments? And from the people uh, online? Yes, yes, please. please. Okay, so I have a question. Um, many of the results which you mentioned depend somehow of the rationality of uh, some angles and uh, or rotation angle and so on. And uh, my question is uh, whether are you aware of uh, some results uh, which, uh, um, how to say, uh, okay, so uh, maybe maybe just one uh, remark there is also, uh, uh, there are also various uh, notions of uh, irrationality measures. These are notions such as being a Liouville number and so on. And my question is, uh, whether are there uh, some results which uh, depends from this uh, uh, these notion that, for example, yeah. if a yeah. number yeah, 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 is yeah, 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 that yeah. some dynamical system has a certain properties? Yes, there is a whole um, area of, 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 of research uh, which try to emulate uh, uh, the notions of Louisville numbers and uh, diaphantine numbers. And diaphantine numbers are, are numbers which are uh, badly, badly, uh, badly uh, approximated by rational numbers and Louisvillean are quickly approximated. And generally, gen so, so I, I'm not able to quote uh, quickly such kind of results, but uh, uh, the general uh, strategy is to show, okay, because of the fact that diaphantine conditions are very frequent, almost every rotation on or almost every vectors are, 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 are diaphantine. So, uh, the, there are some results uh, saying, for example, that for diaphantine uh, um, uh, rotation on 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 uh, on uh, uh, translation surfaces are uniquely or something like that. But the notion of to be diaphantine it's completely different than uh, standard notion. Uh, to, 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 to define correct uh, notion of, uh, of, of, of to be diaphantine or 
Liouville, we have to consider so-called uh, interval exchange transformations, uh, which uh, are which are uh, counterparts of rotations on the circle. And uh, interval exchange transformations uh, can pro produce some link between, between um, translation surfaces and the language of uh, Diaphantine and Uvillian approximation, something like that. Sorry that I'm not so clear enough, but, but uh, but it's, it's, it's not so easy to, to, to describe quickly what's going on. So as I understood correctly, there is a, a somehow parallel definition in the world yeah, of, yeah, in the yeah, yeah, of yeah, dynamical yeah, yeah. systems, yes? Yes, 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 okay. yes, and yes. For yes, those yes. Uh, notions defined in the realm of dynamical systems, they are, they, there are some theorems which distinguish. Uh, yes, yes, okay. yes, okay, yes, I but, uh, but it, 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 this is not, it's not, it's, it's not, it, it does not depend on the properties of angles of polygons or on the, or the direction of the motion. It's a little bit more complicated. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will stop recording and uh, I'll say a few words. Thank you.